Exterior, King's Road, north of King's Landing, day. A thick snow blankets a quiet world. Real wheelhouse rests on the deserted King's Road. The mountain sits on the driver's bench, huddled against the cold. A whale slices through the chill air. It's a baby. Interior, Royal Wheelhouse, day. Cersei Lannister sits, wrapped in furs. A squalling baby regals in a blanket lined with fur blankets. Cersei eyes the infant with disdain. Kyburn pushes open the carriage door. Giddy, he's flushed with the cold. You better have good news. That creature is giving me a headache. I do, your grace. Kyburn offers Cersei his hand, but the queen gets out on her own. Exterior, King's Road, north of King's Landing Day. Kyburn leads Cersei and the mountain over a rise to show them limbs, hundreds of them, mangled and twisted together, some human, some animal. The snow around the limbs is black, soaked with old blood. The twisted line of limbs shakes in a curve, looping and crossing over itself to form an unfinished infinity symbol, an alpha symbol. It took quite a bit of digging, my queen, but this is the answer. This will draw the Night King to us. Are you certain? It looks like a pile of mangled scraps. This one alone, no. But I have sent an envoy ahead to mark our way to the God's Eye. This will signal the Night King our destination. Supposing your information is accurate, the snow will likely cover it up before he can see it. It needs one final touch. I thought you might want to do the honor. Kyburn offers Cersei a torch, which has been staked in the ground nearby. They need to light this mother up. Cersei stands, the corner of her mouth twitching with approval. She nods to the mountain. The mountain takes the torch from Kyburn. He lowers it to the symbol. The line of limbs catch fire unnaturally quickly. Flames lick up into the air, sending their dark message to the sky. Exterior, Isle of Faces, day. A weirwood grove as ancient as Westeros. The milky trunks of the heart trees blend with the snow. Their red leaves contrast with their surroundings. Brandon Stark sits against the largest, the oldest tree, his hands entwined in the pale branches. Only the whites of his eyes are visible. Blood drips down his face like tears. No. He gasps for air as his eyes flick back to their normal dark brown. His chest heaves as Sansa Stark rushes over. Are you hurt? It's over. The war is over. Sansa smiles, relief. He did it. Jon killed the Night King. Daenerys died on the battlefield, as did Drogon. So the chance we need to create the weapon we needed? Dead. The smile falls from Sansa's face. Exterior, King's Landing, Aegon's High Hill, day. A smoky ruin of King's Landing. Ash and snow flow through the air, coating the city in gray silt. John kneels in the filth, cradling Daenerys' head in his arms. His eyes are rimmed red, dead with the loss of his queen, his wife, his child. Rhaegal is curled behind him, keening for his mother and brother. Beric Dondarrion stands by, battling his own grief as he watches the city reel in the wake of wildfire. Beric touches Jon's shoulder. This is a hard loss, but there will be time to mourn later. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I thought your god had a plan. Why did he let it die? I don't know. We have to get you to safety or we won't have a chance to find out. We already don't have a chance. We're men who've looked death in the face and been brought back. Even in the dark, the light shines. If we stop fighting, fighting to survive, that's when all is lost. I'm going to kill him. John looks from Daenerys. King's Landing is covered in smothering smoke and wailing wounded. The falling snow is particularly thick over Visenya's hill. Exterior King's Landing, Visenya's hill, day. On the scarred mound that used to be the great sept of Baelor, the Night King stands overlooking its destruction. Most of the city has been leveled. The screams of the survivors are muted here. The cold is so deep it stills the sound. 
He raises his arms. They are starkly light against the black smoke and green fire plaguing the city. A crisp sound, clear and loud despite the sounds of the dying capital. The sound of ice cracking apart. The Night King's rallying cry. Exterior, King's Landing, various day. Nearby, a blacksmith's shop has been destroyed. Flames billow up, larger than any man. A White Walker lieutenant emerges from behind the fire. He steps through it, flames shrinking from his presence. He steps over corpses, leaving fresh whites in his wake. Across the city, the Night King's lieutenants appear, shifting rubble away. They look towards Visenya's hill. One by one, they answer their king's call. Rumblings of the deep cracking of ice echo through the city streets. Exterior, King's Landing, Visenya's Hill, Day. The Night King calls Viserion to him. The great ice dragon bursts out of the sky, screaming his victory. Viserion swoops down before the Night King, lowering a scaly wing to the ground. The Night King climbs up and they take off over the city. Exterior sky, King's Landing, Day. The Night King and Viserion loop around the city. As they pass over Aegon's high hill, he sees Jon Snow cradling the body of Daenerys Targaryen. A hint of a smile cracks across the Night King's icy face. The Night King turns Viserion's north. They fly over Philly Bottom, over the Dragon Pit, past the Dragon Gate, and disappear from view. Exterior, King's Landing, Aegon's Hill, Day. Small folks shriek as a fresh wave of whites attack. John and Beric look out over the city, taking in this hell. A shadow passes over them. They look up, squinting against the sun. The Night King rides Viserion overhead. John glares at his enemy, inhuman fury building in his dark eyes. John shifts Daenerys' body to Beric. I need you to take care of her. Of course. I'll give my life before letting anything happen to her. Thank you. John nods, mouth set in a grim line. He grabs Beric's forearm. John stands and climbs atop Rhaegal. Rhaegal gives two mighty beats of his wings, and they are aloft, following the wake of the Night King and Viserion. Exterior, Isle of Faces, Day. Sansa, Bran, and Brienne of Tarth form a semicircle in the middle of the Werewood Grove. A few of the children of the forest observe from the shadows. If the Night King is on his way, it's not safe here. We should fall back to Harrenhal immediately. It's not safe anywhere. At least in the castle, we have some hope of defending ourselves. Here, we're open to attack on all sides. Ashmore moves towards them. There is another option. I can help Bran into his destiny. I have already accepted my fate as the Three-Eyed Raven. You've learned tricks and gained wisdom, certainly. But you have yet to embrace what it fully means to hold that title. Ash places a hand on the trunk of the weirwood. A twiggy tendril starts growing from a low branch, twisting its way towards Bran. Sansa moves to grab it. What are you doing? Stop! You made a promise. The tendril touches his skin. Bran is thrown into a warg with a gasp. His eyes roam white, searching for something they can't see. Within seconds, he's back to Bran. It doesn't matter now. The Night King is on his way. They all look at one another, concern etched on their faces. Exterior sky, north of King's Landing, day. Viserion flies over a frozen Westeros. The Night King sits on Viserion. A spiral of smoke catches his attention. Viserion gently banks, and they fly toward it. Only a moment passes before they see the fire. It's a pattern, burning bodies arranged into the alpha symbol. The Night King looks into the air across the land towards the God's Eye. Another burning alpha symbol is a distance away, beckoning him. His azure eyes flick to milky white as he wargs into exterior, Isle of Faces, Day, Bran. Bran's dark brown eyes flash to blue the Night King's eyes. He begins seizing, gasping for air. His arms thrash in front of him, as though attacking someone trying to strangle him. His hand grabs onto a weirwood and holds fast. The seizing gets worse. Brienne rushes to slice the tendril with her sword. You cannot. The three-eyed raven made a promise. 
They say the best swords have names. This stops Brienne short. Sansa moves to help Brienne, but Ash grabs her wrist. Ash is stronger than she looks. You cannot. This tree is killing him. You made a promise. He'll understand if I break it. He can't breathe. I will shield your back and keep your counsel. Sansa turns to Brienne. That's what you said to me. And I pledged it to your mother. You both made a promise. The gods see everything that happens in front of the werewoods. Do you think they'll react well to a broken pact? Brienne grips Oathkeeper. Sansa puts her hand out. Stop, Brienne. We need to let this happen. Brienne nods to her lady. Exterior God's Eye, night. The lake surrounding the Isle of Faces is quiet, glassy waters reflecting the stars. Ripples disturb the serenity as a rowboat glides across. The mountain pulls at the oars, powerful, methodical. Circe and Kyburn sit opposite each other in the body of the boat. Circe carries the baby, who is sleeping soundly. She looks at the baby's sleeping face. Her face softens, almost imperceptible, but there. Kyburn sees this. I think that went rather well. I'd be shocked if he didn't take the bait. If your research holds true. Oh, it will. Of that I have no doubt. The baby wakes and cries, cold and hungry. Cersei moves to hand him back to Kyburn. Shut it up. Of course, my queen. Do you have a, a method you recommend? Are you challenging me? Never. You're, you're known for your skills as a mother. You were so doting on your children. It is not my child. I had three perfect angels. Now I have three perfect ghosts. Take it and shut it up. The icy glare she levels at Kyburn could rival the Night King. He takes the infant without another word. Exterior, King's Landing night. Still raging wildfire illuminates the war-torn streets. Burned and bloody, small, talk, small folk wail. The remaining whites are terrorizing the city, intent on killing as many as they can. Beric carries Daenerys' body in his arms. He looks at the carnage. A hooded man walks toward him. Beric tenses, glances at the sheath stored strapped to his own hip. He can't reach it, not without dropping Daenerys' body. The man pulls back his hood, revealing himself to be Varys. He looks at Daenerys, crestfallen. My birds were right. I had hoped they would be wrong in this instance. I'm to keep anything from happening to her, keep her from changing. But it's going to be nearly impossible getting her to safety through this. I know a way. Follow me. Varys pulls his hood back up and walks away. Beric follows. Interior, Red Keep, Passage, Night. It is dark and dank in the tunnel under Aegon's Hill. Varys carries a torch. Beric follows. Dragon skulls loom from carved crevices. Their shadows dance on the walls in the torchlight. Do you think Rhaegal will ever get so big? That would require him surviving this long night. This is not what I saw in the flames. I don't see how this can possibly be what the Lord of the Light intended. The entire city is on fire. Seems fitting for such a god. What do you know of him? I don't presume to know anything where gods are concerned. But a god of shadow demons and burned children. It's not a stretch to think this is exactly what he wanted. Those had a purpose. We came here to fulfill a prophecy. The prophecy to save us. Prophecies are tricky things. More often than not, they are misread or carried out differently than expected. They near the end of the tunnel. Interior, Red Keep, Throne Room, Night. The throne room is the shadow of its former glory. The ceiling is blown away, its charred rafters letting snow and ash drift in. The hall is coated in a soft white layer. The stained glass windows are shattered. The Iron Throne sits at the head of the room. The glass panel behind it is gone. The iron outline of the seven-pointed star remains. A door opens on the side of the room. Varric and Varys walk in, footsteps muffled. 
They marvel at the great hall, once so regal, now just another ruin. Beric gently places Daenerys' body at the base of the Iron Throne. He sits on the steps, looking bleakly across the hall. This is not the future I came back six times to fight for. This is what all battles lead to, even for the most just and righteous of causes. I really thought she was the answer, that we had enough to beat that icy bastard. It's easier to have more living at the end of a war when you're dead. Don't fight for the enemy. The men start as the door creaks open. Beric draws his sword. Melisandre enters, her eyes as red as her hair. She has been crying. So this is where our hope is laid to rest. Jon Snow could still prevail. Daenerys was to play a role in bringing the light back to this world. Now there is nothing to stop the Great Other. They all stare at Daenerys' body. Exterior Isle of Faces, night. The rowboat gets closer to shore. The baby, still in Kyvern's arms, is crying harder than ever. Kyvern pulls out a small vial of a dark liquid and pops the stopper out. What do you think you're doing? Putting a stop to this incessant crying. I don't want to give this Night King spoiled goods. This is merely a sleeping drought. Not at the expense of my deal. Put that vial away or I'll see to it that you get the first drink. Kyvern glances at the shore and it's awestruck. The Night King stands at the water's edge, torch in hand. Determined, Cersei smiles. It's finally time to make this deal, to seal her fate as the last living queen of Westeros. The boat scrapes against the icy shore. The mountain climbs out and pulls it onto land. Cersei steps onto the snow. Exterior sky, Isle of Faces, same. High above, Jon circles on Rhaegal. He sees the boat landing, sees the Night King waiting for its occupants. The Weirwood Grove is just over a ridge, blocking it from the Night King's view. It's too small to land Rhaegal. John angles Rhaegal down to a clearing. Exterior, Isle of Faces, clearing, night. John leaps off and draws his sword. Rhaegal takes off into the sky as John moves silently toward the Night King. Exterior, Isle of Faces, Weirwood Grove, night. Bran sits nestled in the weirwood trunk, eyes white. Sansa studies her brother's face for insights on his condition. Brienne stands guard. Brienne sees a dragon dive down, then take to the sky once more. Lady Sansa, stay here. Brienne heads for the clearing. Exterior Isle of Faces, night. Unsure, Cersei strides toward the Night King, baby cradled in her arms. The baby has finally stopped crying. Across the ridge, John moves closer, taking time to keep surprise on his side. Longclaw is ready for blood. Cersei and the Night King face off. Do you understand the common tongue? They say you are of the first men. Shall we be of the last? Cersei holds the baby out to the Night King. The baby giggles and waves, oblivious to its impending transformation and demise. John raises his sword as he rushes in. He's intent on saving the child, murdering everyone else. The Night King turns to look at this new attacker. Brown eyes meet blue. The Night King's face is filled with hate as he draws his sword, Dawn. Cersei slips the Caspar's dagger from her cloak. Brienne charges over the ridge to kill this evil bitch of a woman. No, Brienne! Alarmed, Cersei's hand moves to her neck, pulling skin away to reveal Arya Stark. John skids to a halt, shocked. Arya! The Night King wheels around as Arya plunges the dagger towards the Night King's chest. Steel arcs toward ice, closer and closer, until... The Night King grabs her wrist just before the tip of the blade connects. He wrenches Arya's wrist, forcing her to her knees. Jon sees his sister in peril and runs harder. He won't lose Arya like he lost Recon. Furious, Kyburn turns to the mountain. Kill that bitch! The mountain draws his monstrous sword. He looks at Arya, then back at Kyburn. The mountain swipes his sword down, leaving Kyburn from shoulder to cleaving Kyburn from shoulder to groin. The mountain pulls off his helmet, showing he's the hound. Fucking smelled like death in there. Battling the Night King, Jon brings Longclaw down in a deadly strike. The Night King releases Arya and parries Jon in one fluid motion. Jon kicks the Night King solidly in the chest. The Night King stumbles back, stunned by the blow. 
Suddenly, a red-eyed blur of white fur leaps past John. Snarling, jaws snapping, Ghost sinks his teeth into the Night King's arm and knocks the creature over. John pulls up Arya, he and the baby in her arms. Get to safety. I can help. You already have. Brienne steps in. I've got her. Please, keep us safe. John whirls as Ghost yelps. The Night King shoves the dire wolf off. The Night King stands. John advances on him. Snarling viciously, Ghost circles behind the Night King. John and the Night King duel. Each time John advances, he presses the Night King back. Ghost is there, snapping at the Night King's heels and preventing the Night King from retreating. Even so, the Night King is better, parrying every strike, giving as many blows as he gets. The Night King looks off to the distance, sensing the arrival of another presence. Exterior, Isle of Faces, Ridge Knight. Bran and Sansa crest the ridge. Bran examines the duel with grim serenity. He's making a plan. Bran's eyes go milky white as he wargs into the Night King, who suddenly cannot force himself to move or fight. The Night King is frozen. John, now! Exterior, Isle of Faces, Night. Seizing this opportunity, John angles his blade for the Night King's chest. He hits the Night King perfectly in the heart. As the blade stabs into the icy chest, it shatters. Longclaw is destroyed. John looks at the fragments of Valyrian steel in the snow, at the hilt in his hand. Hope drains from his face. Interior, Red Keep, Throne Room, Night. Beric, Varys, and Melisandre surround Daenerys' body. Beric is bowed over his queen, slightly praying. We serve the same god. Help me send her to the Lord of Light. Without sacrifice, words are simply smoke in the wind. Surely you don't mean that. There are other ways to serve the dead. Varys claps his hands and steps backwards. He is not a religious man. He will give him space. Exterior, Isle of Faces, night. The Night King struggles to break free of Bran's warg. He strains, unable to move his body. John stares at the hilt in his hand. He fumbles for a backup. Bran struggles to keep control over the Night King's mind. He pulls him to exterior, Winterfell, Broken Tower, Day, Vision. Not the ruins they left behind, but a Winterfell from years ago surrounded by misty green fields. Present day Bran climbs the Broken Tower, moving just as nimbly as the day he was pushed. Summer, just a puppy, paces at the foot of the tower, barking frantically. The Night King pers pursues Bran, climbing impossibly fast. He reaches for Bran's ankles with his icy blue hand. He grasps Bran's legs, stalling him. Exterior, Isle of Faces, Weirwood Grove, night. Bran is caught in the warg, veins straining in his neck with his internal struggle, mouth open in a soundless scream. Everyone gathers around Bran. John joins them. Brienne, you need to take everyone to safety. Like hell she will. I didn't come all this way to run like a southern coward now. Did you see? Valyrian steel won't kill him. We're out of options. I agree. We need to get as far away from here as possible. Good. You need to go. Wait. You're not coming? I have to finish it. If I can't end him, I can slow him down. I won't leave you. There is another way. Everyone looks at the child, but Bran speaks, still trapped in the war. Night King. Yes, that's what we're trying to figure out. Listen to him. John, Knight, King, Steel. Bran, what are you saying? He cannot speak fully. He cannot break the warg and keep control of the Night King. Seven fucking hells. I'll distract that frozen cunt of a king. The Hound draws his sword. Brienne holds hers aloft as well. I'll join you. I don't need help. Not for this. My duty is to defend the Starks. Together we stand a chance. Together they run out of the Night King. Bran comes out of the warg. Blood drips from his eyes. John must become a Night King. Only then will he have the power to defeat this one. I won't let that happen. It's not up to you, Sansa. Bran, what are you saying? When the wall falls, all the fires will go out. We need fire and ice to win this war. The fight is between the living and the dead. 
You can't just step over to the other side. You've been prepared to give your life for quite a while now. Not like this. You are Targaryen and Stark. Your blood sings the balance needed to win this work. You're the only one who can. The ringing of steel and a roar of pain echo from across the ridge. Exterior Isle of Faces, clearing night. Brienne and the Hound duel with the Night King. Their swords ring heavy as they rain powerful blows against him. The Night King swings his sword, landing a blow on Brienne's breastplate. It shatters. The Hound roars and attacks the Night King with unparalleled hot fury. His blows are so quick and powerful, the Night King can only defend. The Hound might win this. The Hound forces the Night King to kneel under his attack. Suddenly, the Night King's hands fly up, catching the Hound's sword in his frozen grip. The Hound struggles, pressing down with all his strength. His scarred face twitches with effort. The Night King rises, pushes back against the blade. Its hilt catches the Hound under his jaw. The man stumbles back, days long enough for the Night King to slit his throat. Dark blood spatters against the snow as Brienne roars. Sandra! The Night King heads for the Weirwood Grove. Exterior, Isle of Faces, Weirwood Grove, night. The group hears Brienne let loose a wail that can only mean death. It needs to happen at the oldest heart tree, where the first was made. Goodbye, brother. The Night King crests the ridge. Bran slips back into the warg, which stops the Night King in his tracks. Exterior, Winterfell, Broken Tower, Day, Vision. Bran kicks the Night King, who loses his grip. The Night King tumbles. Bran climbs higher, higher to the window, that window where Bran met his fate so many years ago. Bran climbs onto the ledge and looks in. Ned Stark stands there, his hands clasped behind his back. Father, the man who passes the sentence must swing the sword. Bran steps into the broken tower. Exterior, Isle of Faces, Weirwood Grove, night. John turns to the largest weirwood, its massive trunk rising into the night sky. You can't be considering this. We can't make light, Bringer. Wouldn't we need magic? Ron has it, as do we. If I do this, would I still be me? No. So I live undying, watching my family grow old and die, and their children grow old and die. No, you must go north. Can you reverse it? No. You seem awfully fond of that word. Surely you can explain more. If you do this, there is no changing back. If you survive, you will be exiled to the deep north, never to return. What if this doesn't work? The long night comes. Man may cease. There has to be another way. It is our best chance at fixing this problem. A problem of your creation. You made this night, King. You should be making the sacrifices. We would if we could, but it must be man. And for your sacrifice, we offer this. To fade away, no more will we meddle in the affairs of man. And how do I know you'll keep your end? Pact made in front of the heart tree cannot be broken. John looks at his sisters, at the children, at the Night King glaring down from the ridge. John offers his arm. Ash takes it. A pact is made. Interior, Broken Tower, Day, Vision. Bran and Ned smile at each other. Bran, you've come a long way from that boy who couldn't hit a target. I still can't. No, you can do much more. A sound from the window behind Bran. He turns to look, sees the Night King grasp the ledge and pull himself into the window. Bran turns back to Ned. Ned holds his greatsword ice, offering the grip to Bran. Slowly, Bran unsheathes the great blade. He turns to face the Night King as Ned steps back. Interior, Red Keep, Throne Room, Night. Beric holds his hands over Daenerys' hardened wounds. He prays quickly to the Lord of Light to save her. Much more methodical, practical, Melisandre washes her queen's body as best she can, carefully wiping away the grime of war. She pulls Beric's knife from his belt and slices off a lock of Daenerys' short hair. She takes it, chanting lowly in High Valyrian, and lets the hair fall into the flames of Varys' torch. Interior, Broken Tower, Day, Vision. 
Bran swings the mighty sword, bringing it crashing down against the Night King's blade. Bran pushes down, pressing the Night King's back against the window ledge. The Night King slips out from the attack, using Bran's momentum against him. He grabs Bran by the throat, holding the boy out over the open air. Exterior, Isle of Faces, where would grow night. Blood flows out of Bran's eyes. The frost creeps further up his leg. Across the ridge, the Night King glares at him. He pushes a foot, taking a step, then another. His fingers tighten on Don's hilt. Bran's warg is breaking. John sees the Night King moving. We haven't any dragon glass. Is there another way? Valerian steel would work just as well. Dragon glass is forged into metal. The cat's paw dagger. Arya looks at the dagger. This is why you gave it to me. You knew John would need the dagger. Bran remains in the ward. You can't be serious. Ash, are you able to do this? I am. Arya, give me the dagger. I won't. Arya, you can't stop this. If you're going to do this, it should be one of us. A stop. Arya looks at her siblings. Sansa nods. It should be me. I can't ask you to do that. You're not. Can she do it? We'll have some magic to work, but she can push the blade, yes. Do you really want a stranger to end your life? John nods his assent. Interior, Red Keep, throne room, night. Melisandre lays hands with Beric. She continues chanting in High Valyrian as he does in the common tongue. In the shadows, Varys cannot look away. Exterior, Isle of Faces, night, the moment of truth. As John is bound to the heart tree, Sansa hugs him. She can't let him do this without him knowing how much she loves him. She's letting him go. Arya holds the cat's paw, not ready to do what she must. Ash murmurs ancient words of magic. John nods to Arya. Arya looks between his sharp tip and her brother's bare chest. She places the pointy end on the center of his chest. The North will remember. Arya looks into his dark brown eyes, so like her own. Years of memories pour between them in an instant. Arya gives one push, shoving the blade into Jon Snow in a single motion. Another push of her wrist, and the hilt breaks off. The steel is buried on Jon's chest with no way out. Jon grunts in pain, struggles against the bonds. His head falls forward, limp against his chest. Arya looks at Ash. This wasn't supposed to happen. What did you do? What have I done? John! John! Jon Snow is dead. Interior, Red Keep, throne room, night. Beric and Melisandre pray over Daenerys' body. Varys steps forward. Perhaps it is time. Suddenly, Beric and Melisandre both jolt upright as though stricken by lightning. They collapse, their faces frozen in awe and ecstasy. Varys approaches, apprehensive. He examines the bodies, never touching them. The body's dead eyes stare. Varys steps back, looking at three corpses where there was only one. Then a clap of celestial thunder as Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen, first of her name, the Unburnt, Queen of the Andals and the First Men, Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, the woman forged in ice and fire, the Azor Ahi gasps for air and bolts upright. She looks around, takes in the death and ruin. She gasps in horror at the bodies lying next to her, pushes herself away from them. Daenerys sees Varys. Upon meeting her gaze, the spider drops to his knees. He cannot meet her gaze. What has happened here? A miracle, your grace. Drogon. She touches her wound, remembering. I am... Sorry for your loss. What of your other child? Daenerys places a hand over her womb and closes her eyes. Her eyes snap open. He lives. Daenerys has fire in her eyes. Exterior Isle of Faces, night. John's head droops. Dark blood marks from his wound. Sansa weeps over her dead brother. Arya is a hollow shell. She prepares a torch to burn her brother's body. 
Suddenly, John's head snaps up. He gasps for air. His dark eyes turn azure blue. His body freezes, leeching it of color. His tissues desiccate, forming deep grooves in his flesh. His form becomes leaner, somehow more efficient. It becomes something else entirely. Jon Snow is a Night King. The bonds securing him to the tree freeze and shatter. He looks at his hand, undead and translucent. He looks around at his family, expression unreadable. Sansa is horrified. Arya searches for a hint of her brother in that cold face. John? Arya, don't. Brienne's hand closes on her sword hilt, ready to draw. John bends down and picks up Longclaw's hilt. He runs his hand from the hilt to the length of a sword. He forges a blade of glacier ice. What are you doing? John heft the sword in the moonlight. Everyone, stay behind me. Brienne draws her blade. John looks at the group and readies his sword. Interior, broken tower, day, vision. The Night King holds Bren out the window. Thunder clasps in the background. Clouds gather unnaturally fast. Bran looks past the Night King to his father. You think my life is such a precious thing to me? What of my family? Now that is w- worth trading one's honor. Ned nods gravely. Bran disappears just as lightning strikes the broken tower with a blinding flash. Exterior Isle of Faces, where would grow night. Exhausted, Bran releases the Night King from the warg. The Night King immediately charges at the group, moving inhumanely fast. John charges. John's swords clashes with the Night King's. Ice meets dawn. Interior Red Keep, throne room, night. Daenerys is overwhelmed by the destruction. She turns to Varys. Where is John? He flew to the God's Eye, the intent on avenging you and killing the Night King. He's in for quite a shock. Of a lifetime. I am overjoyed that you and your child live again. I wish you both and your husband many happy years. Screams of anguish from the small folk in the streets rip through the moment. Daenerys moves toward the pain. Exterior, King's Landing, night. Drogon's body is a massive silhouette against the burning city. It is torn and bloody. Miscreants approach. The leader brandishes a knife. Exterior, red keep, battlements, night. Daenerys looks over her city, Varys by her side. Whites attack every living thing. People try to fend them off. Most are too wounded and succumb to death. The lucky ones fall into flames. The rest change into whites themselves. Near Daenerys, two men wrestle in the bloody mud. Cities in the wake of a war need good leaders to pull them out. Most people think it's the winner who makes the dynasty, but it's the one who rebuilds. That's not me. You gathered armies, freed slaves, and journeyed across the narrow sea to find your destiny. Now you turn your back. They deserve someone better. A leader who didn't just burn their city to ash and ruin. Someone worthy of them. If that were true, you'd still be lying dead at the foot of that godforsaken chair your ancestors built. A horn sounds in the distance. Daenerys and Varys look for its source. Athcho arrives, flanked by a small contingent of Dothraki. Riding proudly, Athcho leads his people through the streets, searching. Athcho finds his Khaleesi. When Daenerys nods, he motions to his men. They fan out, helping the wounded and fighting the bone men. Exterior, King's Landing, night. The leader of the miscreants approaches Drogon's body. Firelight glints off the steel of his knife. Drogon's wing twitches, sending ripples through the dragon's body. The men draw back in fear and awe. Exterior, red keep, streets, night. Athcho pairs, parries with a white, slicing him down. A child screams from a burning shack. Athcho sheaths his blade and rushes to her aid. The flames are too intense. He stumbles back from the heat. Athcho prepares to brave the flames again when a hand lands on his shoulder. It's Daenerys Targaryen. Fire cannot harm the dragon. Denny walks into the fire. 
In a moment, she returns with the child in her arms. She shields the young one from the flames with her unburnt arms. Take all the wounded to the dragon pit. Set up a healing center there. Any strong enough to fight, attack those bone men and show them you are worthy of your braids. The Thraki around her cry out their approval. The small folk marvel. Exterior King's Landing night. Drogon's eye flicks open and shut almost too quickly for anyone to see. Almost. The miscreants run for their lives or fall to their knees. Drogon's wings snap open to their full breath. Exterior, Isle of Faces, night. John and the Night King parry, fighting to the death. They are evenly matched in power and ability. Their blades are a frantic blur of precision fighting. As John raises ice for another blow, the Night King kicks John in the chest, knocking him to the ground. John struggles to his feet as the Night King places a hand in the snow. A rumbling comes from deep in the earth until the oldest weirwood tree splits in half. The children of the forest cry out as though they have been split as well. The Night King rains blows on John. With a shriek, Regal and Viserion swoop over the clearing. They fight, shooting bursts of flame and snapping at one another. Regal whips his tail around, clipping Viserion in the wing. Regal's jaws clamp around the icy neck. John gains strength from his dragon's victory. He pushes back on the attack. The Night King lets out an icy roar and races at John, scrambling to claw the Valyrian steel out of John's chest. Their blows are deadly in the snow. Ghosts race in, leaping at the Night King to knock him over. The Night King slices at the direwolf's fur, leaving a deep red gash in John's wake. John takes the distraction and swings ice against the Night King's leg, chopping it off at the knee. The Night King falls to his knee, staring at John in amazement. With a mighty blow, ice knocks John from the Night King's grasp. John plunges his fist into the Night King's chest. Slowly, inch by inch, he pulls that ancient dragon glass from the Night King. The children marvel. The Night King falls to his knees. He watches Viserion slowly dissolve into the snow, flakes twisting away on the wind as though that's all they ever were. Exterior Red Keep streets dawn. Dothraki soldiers fight the whites. Covered in ash and blood, Daenerys carries a child she saved. Suddenly, the whites fall, nothing but dust in the air. The Dothraki and small folk gaze in wonder. Daenerys, still holding the child she rescued, looks to the sky, looks north. Then she hears a mighty roar. Drogon soars over the city. Daenerys sees her child, over joy he survived. Drogon lands near his mother. She approaches him. She touches his muzzle. Tentatively, the girl in her arms raises her small hand, placing it next to Daenerys' on Drogon. Danny turns to see the small folk watching, apprehensive. This is the pair that burned their city to the ground, and the pair that saved it. Varys steps forward. Come forward, my lord. Your grace? I presume your little bir birds are tucked away safely in the city. You presume correctly. Send them out and tell the world what happened here. Tell them that Daenerys Targaryen, first of her name, the unbought, queen of the Andals and the first men, Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, breaker of change and mother of dragons, has been reborn out of the fires in the long night. What shall I tell them of your reign? Let all know that so long as they steal no property and take no lives, they will have nothing to fear from me. They will live as free people. Daenerys speaks to the crowd. If you'll have me as your queen, I will devote my life to serving you. Keeping you fed in famine, clothed in winter, I will break the wheel that keeps you down your entire lives. But only if you'll have me. Silence. A silence that seems to stretch for an eternity. Then a voice from the crowd. My queen! My queen, my queen! On and on the voice chants, more voices joining with each repetition. Soon the whole crowd is cheering their support. Varys disappears into the crowd to send the message out. Daenerys Targaryen has been chosen. Exterior, Isle of Faces, dawn. The Night King looks at the coming dawn. His body slowly fades into snow and air. Jon looks at the dragonglass arrow in his fist. He crushes it into dust. He looks at the cracked weirwood tree. He sees the body of the hound, Bran's blood-streaked face. 
Arya's burns and frostbite, the weeping gash across Ghost's belly. This is only a fraction of the cost of the Great War. Exterior King's Landing Day establishing. The capital is still frozen and snowy, but it's a winter far less harsh than what the long night promised. The dead have been cleared from the streets. People go about their lives, children laugh and throw snowballs. Throughout the city, maesters meet with builders. They plan the city's reconstruction. This is a king's landing at peace with itself in the outside world. Interior, Red Keep, Queen's Chambers, Day. Simple yet elegant chambers worthy of a queen who broke the wheel. Daenerys stares out the window listening to her city. A knock at the door. Enter. Jorah opens the door. The look on his face gets Daenerys' attention. Hope rises on her face. Is it him? He opens the door wider. There stands Arya. Daenerys' face falls. Arya steps in the room. Jorah gives a small bow, closes the door behind him. Is he dead? No. And why isn't he here? I'm here to tell you his goodbye. You won't be seeing John again. So the raven was true? Yes. John said his child wouldn't be a bastard, now he abandons him. He thought you were dead and it was the only way to win the war. When we can travel, I will take his son to him. You cannot. He's not John anymore. Daenerys turns away, tears welling in her eyes. The Starks pledge their support to House Targaryen. We are family now. You're so much like him. What will you do now? Exterior King's Landing, streets, day. Arya walks the streets of the capital, seamlessly weaving through the tight throng of people. A blind beggar child sits in the snow, covered by a thin shawl. Arya puts coins in his bowl. She takes her uttermost cloak and drapes it around the child. Arya puts a hand in her bag and sh as she stands and looks at the crowd of people. She looks back down at the beggar child, face hidden. When she turns back, her face has changed. A stranger walks down the street of King's Landing, needles swaying from her hip. Exterior, gray, shirt, gray joy ship, day. Yara stares across the rolling waves. Dis the distant shore is frozen white. They've sailed north. A sailor brings Theon's body on a slab to a break in the railings. The crew assembles as Yara steps forward. You were ironborn, and a man of Winterfell. We lay you to rest in the northern sea. She pushes the slab forward and dumps Theon's body into the, into the sea. Be at peace with the knowledge that I will do better for the Iron Islands than our father. She hears a scuffle behind her. A sailor pushes forward a young girl. What's this now? Found her hiding below deck. A stowaway? Do you know we do to stowaways, girl? What's your name? The young girl stares defiantly. Dunny. Interesting. We've just got a new queen with a similar name. Where are you from? King's Landing. I saw you fight that other man. I want you to teach me. You want to fight and sail? It's a hard life, girl. Best we drop you at the nearest port. I won't. You want to be my ward? I won't go easy on you. I'll do whatever it takes. Yara ponders a moment, extends her hand. Welcome aboard, Danny. She leads Danny up to the helm and lets the girl grasp it, guided over the waters. Exterior, Isle of Faces, day. The weirwood grove is destroyed, the oldest tree cracked in half. The children of the forest circle the perimeter. Ash leads them in a magical chant. The edges of the grove flicker. Slowly, the feet of the children disappear, as though a curtain of invisibility is being drawn upwards. Inside, the curtain is dark. As it closes, Ash looks up for a final glimpse of the light. Slowly, the children in the grove disappear, sealed off from the world so their existence might fade in peace. The curtain seals, leaving only snowy hills behind. Not a trace of the heart tree nor the stone formations remain. Exterior, Winterfell ruins, day. Bran Stark places his hands on a recently constructed foundation of Winterfell's walls. He closes his eyes and whispers an incantation. 
Waves of glistening light radiate from Bran's hands. The light spreads over the stones as Sansa watches. The light dissipates and Bran sits back in his chair. Bran stares for a beat. Yes, as long as there is a Stark in Winterfell. Yes, what? You wanted to know if the magic will keep the Night King out. John is a Stark. John is the Night King. A wolf howls in the distance. Just as I'm the Three-Eyed Raven, and you are the Lady of Winterfell. The other Night King came back. After thousands of years. What happened once can happen again. Tell me, what do you see? The sun is setting on the children of the forest. Their magic will fade. Beyond that, it isn't written yet. Sansa nods, satisfied. She turns to watch the stonemasons reconstruct Winterfell's walls. Bran looks north as if he is keeping a sorrowful secret. Exterior, the wall, night. Jon Snow stands atop the wall, his hardened face gazing south. Below, masons carve mammoth blocks of ice. They place the blocks in the breach made by Viserion. Ghosts appear, silent as ever. He looks up at John. Red eyes meet blue. John nods. He turns to face the vast north. He and ghosts begin the descent into his empty kingdom. Interior, Red Keep, throne room, day. The throne room has been rebuilt. The room itself is full of nobles, craftsmen, and small folk alike. They mingle, discussing affairs. Daenerys sits on the dais, pregnant enough to show. She negotiates peace talks between two merchants. They shake hands, bow to her in thanks. She sends them away. Varys approaches. Your restoration efforts are unlike any this city has seen. The people wish to thank you. A gift for you. He motions to Queen's guards behind him. They carry carrying a large object forward covered by drape. Varys unveils a crib. Daenerys steps down to examine the gift. The wood is stained an impossible red, revealing a grain that ripples like Valyrian steel. Three of the posts are topped with ornately carved dragon heads. The fourth, a white dire wolf with red eyes. The people love you. Please thank the artisans that carve such masterful work. The air will have many a sound night's sleep protected in such a cradle. Daenerys runs a hand over Direwolf's figure as she touches her stomach. Interior, Red Keep, Queen Chamber's Night. Drogon soars in the sky outside the window, a flying speck. Daenerys is alone in the room, the fire is burning low. She should be asleep. The crib has been moved in. Danny goes to a chest at the foot of her bed, opens it. Inside is Varys' wedding gift, the Winterfell Crypt Dragon Egg. She runs her finger over the red scales, picks it up. Daenerys places the dragon egg inside the empty crib where it will wait for the air. Danny stares out at her city, lights burning brightly against the night. <laughs>